Hello everyone and welcome to another Watercolor Wednesday. I am Allison with the blog A Glimpse Inside and today I have um, this little window with the girl kind of peering in. I thought kind of, you know, with everything that's going on right now in the world, um, this is kind of, you know, everyone kind of stuck inside and a little lonely. Um, but we're all doing our part and we're, we're trying to stop this good old uh, COVID-19 from getting any worse. But So I thought I would just kind of paint a little something like this this week. Um, this is a 4x4 four four, uh, painting, kind of my usual here. And this one will take a little bit more time than normal, um, but it's not too bad. We only used five stamps. So... The stamps you will need for this one are, um, this is a retired set. It's a Tuscan Villa set. Um, they don't make this one anymore, or at least they don't sell it on Art Impressions anymore. But there are other windows, and you still may be able to find this one on other sites. I'm not real sure. I haven't searched. But if you can find this one, I'm using the window from it. Otherwise, just, you know, see if you have another window that you can use. And then from the foliage set four, we're going to use these two vines. From the little girl set, we are going to do this one right here. So the one that's kind of sideways at the top. And then for the mini flower set, I'm going to do the tiny little dots right here. Um, for the little girl set, you could also use this one because we're cutting off the body we're not using the whole thing so you can use her you can even potentially use this one um, almost like she's sitting you know at the window she's just a little larger so that's why I went with this one but let's see um, for the markers again I use sorry hit the camera um, I use Marby La Plume twos so I have 45 sepia 46 Crimson Lake, oh, there we go, um, number 18 Dark Brown, number 16 Pale Orange, number 86 African Violet, number 15 Olive Green, number 29 Prussian Blue, and number 43 Brilliant Yellow. Um, feel free to use whatever you have, Tombows or or any other water-based markers. All right, so let's get started. So we have our uh, blank four by four square, and we're gonna start with our window. So for the window, um, we're gonna do our normal ink it up in two colors, sepia and African violet. So I'm going to start with African violet and get this good and inked up here. Okay, so then I'm going to go over it again with the sepia. Okay, so we're going to now um, ink this just right in the center of our paper. Kind of give it a good press. And there we go. I'm a little off, but that's okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we're going to do, do like a real quick draw the colors out of the lines. Um, so we'll, we'll go kind of right here where there's this, you know, inside the arch, we will pull that color out because it's going to be pretty dark under those stone archways. And then underneath the shutters, kind of drag that color. It's going to be kind of dark back in there. Same thing on this side. 
drag the color out. And then I am going to just touch the edge of my stones here on the little ledge and just kind of drag that color down to create a shadow underneath. And then I'm just going to touch a little bit of my actual stones. I don't want to pull out a ton on the stones themselves. We're going to leave them mostly white. Um, we'll add a tiny bit of sepia to them. And then just kind of again across the back here. Okay, I'm going to turn my paper here. We're going to go down this whole side of the shutter again kind of pulling out um, to create like a shadow behind the shutter. Spin it. Same thing along the top of the rocks. Got a lot of color up here when I stamp this but that's alright. We just have a nice shadow up here. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go over the top of the shutters, kind of like how we did at the bottom. Again, we're given that shadow, that like the illusion that the shutters aren't all the way pushed back. You got a little, a little side shadow. Okay. So our shadows are mostly done here um, for that section. So now again, I'm going to kind of pull right on the back side of the shutter there because um, it would be darker, like kind of right where the shutter met the rocks right here and kind of just drag that color up and just kind of feather it up. I'm going to do that on both sides. And then kind of like I did at the bottom, I'm going to add a little bit of color into these. I don't want a whole bunch of color. So I'm just going to kind of touch the lines and drag them just a little bit, just to kind of give them some rock shading. All right. And then we're going to move to our shutters real quick. So where this whole end is of the shutter, I'm just going to go give it a quick little once over. Same thing down this side. And then right under these little ledges, I'm going to kind of drag some color out and down. Okay. And then I will kind of go right next to the lines here. Um, just to kind of make these a little more um, predominant, you know, the cracks of the shutters and stuff. Um, here is a knot, so I am just going to go ahead and kind of color that knot in, and then, all right, we're going to leave it just like that for now. So, you're going to need some post-it tape also for this. So I use this for my sample, so I'm just going to flip it over here. And I'm going to tape off the bottom little ledge here. And then I have my little girl. I'm going to ink her up. Let me see if she's got any excess on her. I'm going to ink her up in sepia. And I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to kind of go to like the bottom of her arms and just leave the rest of it because I'm not using her. It's kind of like she's sitting in front of the window, um, you know, just kind of pondering. You can ink the whole thing if you feel comfortable because you masked it off. So even here, um, you know, all these are the bottom of her arms and like the shirt. So it's fine if you need to do that. So she's actually going to face, when you stamp her, she faces this direction. She'll face to the left. 
So I'm going to kind of scoot her over to the right of the window. Okay, so there she is. So again, I didn't, I still end up stamping a little bit. And now she looks like she's just sitting right in front of the window right there. So for her, um, we don't need to drag a ton of color out of the lines for her, but I am going to do just a little bit. I'm going to kind of just do it um, kind of like right where her shirt and her arm, like maybe would shadow. I got a little too much water on my brush. And then kind of right where her, you know, overall little jumper um, meets her shirt. And then I'm just going to kind of pull a little bit of her hair out. Um, you don't need to do a whole bunch on her before we paint her up. Okay. So, for the actual painting itself, I'm going to start with the outside and I'm going to work my way towards her. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is on my palette, I'm going to go ahead and use all, um, put all the colors that I'm using. So here's Prussian blue. Here is dark brown. Here is my Crimson Lake red. Um, African violet. This one's going to be hard to see, but that is my pale peach for her skin tone. And then I am going to put a little bit of sepia on here as well. So, okay. So I'm going to start with the shutters and I'm just going to use sepia to do the shutters. I don't, um, and then like occasionally I will mix in a little bit of African violet and maybe towards the end I'll do a little touch of the dark brown. But so I'm going to start just, I'm not even going to paint the whole thing. I'm not going line to line. I'm not going top to bottom. I'm just, you know, giving it some color. And it's okay if the light shows. So I'm going to go just kind of toward the line here. And then I am going to go down this side again. Okay. So while that one dries, I'm going to pop over here. So same thing. I don't need to... You know, go from line to line with watercolor. You want those white lines. It adds a little bit more depth and dimension and contrast and, you know, all those fun painting terms that you can have. Okay, so now that the base is done, I'm going to go back to my first one. And as the board in the very back here, um, that one is going to be a darker shade because it's, you know, towards the back of your eye line. And so I'm going to go over to make those a little darker. And then I will kind of do a little bit more to make that not a little darker. And then a little bit more in that middle one. And then I'm going to pretty much leave the first one, mostly the light color. And then I will kind of go in on these little vertical or horizontal slats and give them like a little bit darker towards the insides. And then I will come back down one more time along my edge here and that's really what we're going to mostly just keep them at we're not going to go much darker than those if you want to make them a little darker go ahead um, but there's just no need to make them super dark so again we're going to darken up our insides here give our center one just a little shade darker 
and then you can just add a little dimension right there. I need a little more sepia here. So again, I'm going to kind of make this inner one darker. You know, sometimes it's so hard to paint around my camera because I have it so close to the painting so you guys can see that when there's a shine, <laughs> I'm having to like tilt my head all crazy-fied to try to see what I'm painting here. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to make that a little darker. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my sepia and I'm going to try to just get kind of a pretty watered-down version of sepia. Like, I don't want a lot of pigment in my brush right now. And I'm going to add a little bit of brown into my stones. Again, just to add a little bit more color and dimension to kind of go along with that gray that we already pulled out. Rocks aren't one color. So we're just going to kind of pull more color out. And then right here at the top of the arch, I'm going to add a little bit more to make that shadow a little deeper back there. And you can even do the same thing under here if you want. You can add a little bit more or you can get your mix of African violet and sepia since it makes that nice gray gray hue and give those a good darker darker area and actually since I have that on my brush my shadow under here didn't quite go as much as I would have preferred so I'm just going to add a little bit more of my shadow under here okay so, for the most part, our shutters are done. Feel free, if you want, you can do the shutters in a color, like make them like a deep green or, you know, add a turquoise or something. I just wanted to kind of keep this a little more neutral on the outside. Um, and, you know, you can always go, go add a color if you like. And the same thing for the girl. The girl, you can change her skin tone, hair color, however you like. It's so easy with these markers. Okay, so I'm actually going to go around her first here. So I'm going to use the African Violet and kind of the same thing that I did with the shutters. Like I'm going to paint in the background around her. I'm not touching her. I'm leaving a white little border highlight I don't know what you want to call it and then I'm just going to paint around you know turn your paper whatever you need to do where you don't touch her and add a little bit more water it doesn't have to be painted solid and again So, I'm going to let that dry for a moment, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, it's actually near the bottom, it's probably dry, and I'm going to come back near the bottom here, since this is, you know, right where the window, you know, where it meets, the light is going to be darker, you know, under this region of the window and stuff. So, I'm going to make this part of inside a little darker. You can add as many layers of the African Violet as you like to make it as dark as you like. And then I'm just going to kind of add a little bit up here towards the top. Um, just to give a little more depth and texture there. That was a little, little harsh, so. And again, you know, if any of your lines are a little harsh, you can just go back with a little bit of water. And it will just blend itself right back out. Okay. 
So there's our background. We'll give that time to dry. And now we're going to move on to her. And so I chose to do a red shirt and like a blue um, overall for her. So I'm going to start with the red. And again, you know, I'm trying not, you don't have to go line to line here. Because I don't want to accidentally, you know, spread color where it doesn't need to be. So when you do the first coat of this Crimson Lake, it turns out kind of pinky. <clears throat> so give it a second to dry. It dries so fast. And then go right back over it. Go over it as many times as you want to get the shade that you want. I'm going to um, let that sit for a few minutes. And I'm going to come in with my blue. Um, which one is it? Prussian blue? Yes, my Prussian blue here, and I'm going to do her little uh, overalls. Jeez, I'm blinking today. It's been a long day. We're back to from spring break for school, so Woo. homeschool day, whatever. So same thing. If you want it darker in any of the areas. <clears throat> just go over it and while that dries I'm going to go on to her skin tone so I'm using the pale peach um, you can use pale peach you can use even sepia um, there and then there's another color and I'm blanking on what it is right now um, that and the more and more you just you know layer it on the darker and darker the skin tone will go. So I'm just going to sit here and kind of give it a few coats. Same thing, I'm not going, filling it completely in. You can see a slight little highlight down here. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm happy with that skin tone. But what I will am going to do is I'm going to just take a super tiny bit of sepia and kind of add it to her neck region. Just kind of like her hair is giving a shadow and then a little bit like right where her shirt meets her um, skin. And if it went too dark, just add a little bit more of your pale color. And it kind of evens them out a little bit. So then for her hair, I'm just doing um, the dark brown. And then, so I'm just going to kind of brush it in here. And I am going to leave kind of like a little bit of highlight on the top of her head here. So for this, again, change the color of the hair. Um, the more you layer the dark, it will obviously get darker. You can do um, black. You can do, you know, yellowy blonde to make it blonder hair or sepia. You can just, like, keep going. So all I'm doing is sitting here and just going over her hair until I get A hue that I want. So I'm trying to be a little careful down here because there are, um, you know, little stamp lines that I don't want to go away. But if they do, it's not the big of a deal. I have a thin tip on the back of my marker and I can just add them back in. So now that I've gotten that base coat, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of sepia here just to kind of give her an ever so slight shade different right there. And then I am going to come back to my red. Just want to make this a little darker. Especially down here towards the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. And then darker down here. And 
and she, for the time being, is done. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the thin side of my sepia and I'm going to go over a lot of the lines. Not quite all of them, but almost. And kind of darken up any place that may, you know, I may have accidentally, or that didn't stamp well. I'm going to go ahead and darken right here. I'm just going to color it in. Same thing under this shutter. Just going to draw it in there. And then I'm going to go up the back here. The inside ledge. This just kind of helps things pop a little more. Um, gives them more of that depth. So I'll come on this side. Actually, let's go across that little ledge right there. I'm doing this in my sepia, but I probably will come back with some African violet as well. Um, I could have just started with the African violet, but I kind of wanted that like double highlight and depth kind of going on. Okay, so I think that section's pretty good. I am going to kind of come over her a little bit here. So she has like a little area like where her shirt kind of meet under her arms. So I'm going to darken that. Darken her eyelash. And then I'm just going to kind of draw some lines back into her hair. To kind of give her a little more texture. And then again, like anywhere that may have just accidentally got a little washed out. Okay, so that's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that, but I am going to come back with African Violet um, in just a couple places here. So again, I'm going to come under here because I want that to be a pretty good shadow. And then same thing, I'm going to go up the back of the shutter here to kind of darken that area. I'm going to darken the knot in the door right under those pieces. And around. Okay. I'm gonna go right here. Okay. So on to the vine. So we're almost done here. So I have the vines I'll do that way going in both directions. Um, if you only have one big vine, then use this one vine. Um, this is super easy to customize to what stamps you have. So I'm actually only going to kind of ink the top. Like I'm not going to ink this last like quarter of it. Um, and that way I just feel like I can control more of like right where I want it to sit better. And I kind of just want it to fade out of the picture. Like it's just kind of sneaking up and I'm just going to stamp it a few times here and there. Kind of have it creep over. Maybe it kind of pops up onto the window a little bit. I'm going to put one right there. 
Okay, so I'm going to kind of do the same thing on this side. I'm not going to add it as much on this one as I did on that side. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to come across the top here. So, and since these, here I'm going to spin my paper here. It's easier to turn my hand around. <laughs> Um, since, so this one kind of curves up to the left, um, so you can just kind of, you know, stick it, turn it, however you want to do it for the pattern, but you have your other one too that we'll use. So right now I'm actually going to switch to the one that flip goes to the right when it's stamped. So I'm going to come back up here again and... Kind of make it a little bit over the wood or the rock. And then you can just like add, add these in here. As much or as little. So it's kind of like the vine. And then same thing down here. I'm going to add a little bit probably more coming up the wall here. And then probably like one more, a little bit over here. Okay. So, there is our vine. So we're going to quickly add water to that, dip your brush in water, pinch it off, and then just dab your color out. Don't brush stroke. Didn't have enough water on there. Not too much water. <laughs> um... And then just, you know, dab. I like to then kind of spread the color out just a little bit from the image to soften it all the way. And since we stamped it two or three times before we re-inked it, we'll get some nice shades of that green. All right, almost done. One more. I'm going to spin my paper here. So again, since this one kind of, you know, again, it fades in, I'm just going to kind of fade my green over that way. And that way it just kind of looks like, you know, the tree keeps going, the vine keeps going. I just didn't, you know, want the full thing stamped on it. Okay, so there is our vine, and then the very last thing we're going to do is add our little tiny dots with our bright yellow, and then again, I'm not even going to ink all of these, I'm just going to ink a couple, and just kind of put them here and there for a little pop of color. So I'm going to kind of stamp in a circle, or kind of like in a little line here, um, a couple times, and then I'll reapply my ink. as much of the little flowers. Put a little bit right there. Maybe something right there. I'm a sucker for flowers. <laughs> okay. And then same thing that we did with our green. We're just going to dip our brush in water, pinch it off, and dab. These are so little that you don't need a lot of water on them to like so they kind of start to spread because you then you don't want them to just to completely blend into like one blob of yellow so All right, and we're done. That wasn't too bad, was it? So I'm going to sign. 
and date it. And there you have it. Um, maybe you can give it to somebody, you know, right now and brighten their day a little bit. Um, give it to a, a child and let them know they're not alone. And, and um, yeah, you just have a fun little um, little picture. Change up the colors. You can easily customize the child to any skin tone or hair color. Um, this whole thing is, you know, easily can be changed and customized. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had a request um, for a uh, beach uh, with little girls because I have a little girl beach set. And so I'm going to try to work on that one. I have a confession. This is the very first time I've um, done one of my ch uh, child stamps, <laughs> person stamps. So um, I will work on one of the, the beach set um, stamps uh, for a little painting and uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments or shoot me an email or on social media and I will see what I can do. I hope you all have an awesome rest of your week and I'll see you soon. Bye.